the topic of today, it's about production and growth. And let, let me make a short introduction about what we try to achieve with this chapter. Um, I, I, I really try to, to take the order from the textbook. It's not necessarily my first choice, but I think it's not a bad one because I will show you right now how we try to further understand how the economy works. And sorry if I keep on explaining this model, but it's really important. We, we started with the circular flow diagram, and I, I think you, you had enough from this model. You, you, you saw it so many times. You, 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 you have nightmares with it, maybe. You wake up and you see, wow, companies, uh, households. So we have households, we have companies, we have what here? Factors of production. And here we have goods and services. Very good. So this is a nice perspective of the economy. Then from my side, I try to give you something like that. You know that helicopter view, we, we fly over the economy, and I think here was the factory producing some smoke. Here there was a forest with nice trees. Um, I don't know what was here, but we can try a nice car. And on this side, I will put the happy people going to work, going to shopping mall, having uh, wonderful vacations and uh, never forgetting to put everything on Facebook afterwards, something like that. Good, so now, now you have already two perspectives about economy. This came from microeconomics. This was maybe newer, but very simple. Now we're gonna make it more abstract. So we actually look at the same things, more or less. We look at resources, and we look at economic activity, trying to focus on performance, because this is what we want to achieve. We want to achieve a performance where resources are optimally used, where there is no waste. Because if you waste resources, then this is not good for society we will have a lower standards of living and it's not good. What we're gonna see today, it's a production function. So we see, this is very abstract. We move from this one, this was already abstract, but you could see things yeah, connected. This is not so abstract, but it's too simple. I cannot explain much things, much uh, here. You just see the people, the factory, the car, the trees, whatever. Now we, we really go abstract and we say like this. GDP, it's a function which looks like this. I will start with the coefficient A and then I have an F for a function. And here I can write L, this is what? Labor, I can put a K, capital, I can put an H human capital, this is different from labor, which it's really focused on the number of people. Then I have the physical capital here, like factories, computers, cars, other things. And then I have human capital, which is really getting a lot of, lot of more attention in the last years, because here you can make a lot of improvements in human capital side, which are more durable than the physical capital. Because if you have a factory, it will slowly but surely be destroyed because of the, um, because you use it, it's getting less and less productive. But if you have human capital, it might get even more and more productive as you use it. And human capital, it's also a positive externality. You, you recall what an externality is. It positively influences bystanders. I mean, if you work with a very powerful computer and you don't know much about computers, it's not very likely that you're gonna get very smart. 
just because you are sitting next to an amazing computer. But if you work next to a very well-educated person, there is a high probability that you will benefit because you, you work with this person. Okay, so this is human capital, and then we have an end for what? Natural resources. Natural resources. Very good. So if you look now at the whiteboard here, you see all three sides tell more or less the same story. It's about economy, how it works. But here, the focus was what drives the economy, what drives the flows here. What, how is this working? Here, the focus was what is inside an economy. We see factories, resources, people doing a lot of things. While here, I'm really taking only the most important things, which is labor, capital, human capital, and natural resources. And one more thing, I'm focused on the result. You cannot see here the result. You don't see the performance here. You just see money and goods and services flowing. You don't see the results here. Maybe I, if I make some smile here, you, you could assume that everything is perfect. But if I take this view, it's really how much can you produce? And what I forgot you to tell about is this A, which you see is like a multiplication factor. It can really augment the whole result. This is about technology. So if you take everything inside here and you add high technology, you will get a very nice result. Okay. <clears throat> what we did so far, we understood two very important indicators. It was the GDP and what? Last lecture. CPI. CPI, it was about the price level. So what we know right now is how to describe the economy. We can look at an economy from two perspectives. I can look at the Y, which is the GDP, how much it's producing, and I can look at the P, which is the, pri which is the price level. And in the next lectures, we will also see why these two indicators are really helpful to understand the economy. Because I can give you an example. You can look at the economy like an athlete, you know, a, a runner who's running the marathon. And when you run a marathon, there are two very important things to think about. First one is your performance. How fast can you run such a long, long distance? It's 42 kilometers. Another very important indicator is your heart rate. How fast your heart is beating. Because if your heart is beating too fast, you are burning sugar, which means this is not sustainable. You will not be able to run at this speed for a long time, and you have to run for two, three, four hours to complete the marathon. If your heart is beating too slow, it means you are under your potential. You, you don't run fast enough. You have resources to run even faster, because if the heart will uh, be faster, you will get more blood in your muscles, in your brain, and you will be able to give a better performance. The heart rate is here, is the price level for the economy. This is something that we're going to learn later. If the heart rate is too fast, the inflation is starting to go fast and fast, the economy maybe will be really growing, we're going to have a high performance, but this is not going to be sustainable. If the heart rate is too slow, maybe you have deflation, and I, I really suggest, I advise you to Google deflation uh, when you are home, because right now the um, most developed countries are really fighting deflation, not high inflation. Deflation is also very dangerous because, as I told you, like an athlete, it means the economy is under the potential. It's very dangerous. Okay. And why? This is the GDP. This is what we try to achieve. And we're going to introduce at a later stage one more model to look at everything here. It's going to be called aggregate demand and aggregate supply, and it's going to be how the economy works looking at price level and GDP, which will look like this. 
I will have here an aggregate demand and an aggregate supply. And if you look at what I put now on the whiteboard, it's more or less everything you, we're going to learn this semester. This is about macroeconomics. We start from here. We never forget the real view. It's about real production factors. It's about real people. We have to use the abstract side because, you see, it's not nice to work with function. I, I can be sure that some people here were not really in love with mathematics in high school. I, I have this feeling. I don't know if I'm offending anybody, but there are such situations. Nevertheless, the mathematical view has a very um, big advantage. You can take exactly what you want. Yeah. I can take performance. I can take exactly the factors that will help me understand what performance is. And then we're going to have this model, which is not so complicated. But with this model, we can play a lot in order to understand how can we change something in the economy? How can we influence the economy? Here is not so easy. You, you can do it also. Here is not so easy. Here it's impossible. It's just uh, I don't know. view is naive. This picture, Maybe you know what I'm talking about. And, and here it's too simple. It's just basic. Okay. And now is the time for today to focus on this one. This will come later.